Welcome to Level With Us, the bonus ode. We're releasing some unheard content from previous interviews to explore a topic more in depth, look at it through a new lens, or a different perspective. These shorter sodes will also give us the opportunity to answer any questions from listeners. So if you want to know more about a topic, or you just want us to look at a housing-related issue that we haven't yet covered, go to the Level With Us page on our website, homeportohio.org, and fill out the form. All right, let's get into it. This week I'm back with Ana Te Kasungo, Director of Convergence Columbus, and we're getting an update on the Mod Hill Growing Home Ownership Fund. This fund was mentioned back in Bonus Ode 2, but we discussed the barriers to black home ownership back in Episode 2 as well, Crossing the Red Line. This fund launched on February 1st, and as we'll see, it's already had an impact, and it's just the beginning. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me back. Happy, happy spring. Happy spring, and I just realized today is exactly two months since its launch. The, that is wild. The grow, <laughs> we're talking about the Growing Home Ownership Fund. I will say, I was not expecting how emotional February 1st was. I mean, we were like, yeah, we're going to kick off Black History Month with launching this fund. And it was all very, like, celebratory. But the speakers were just, they really hit it home that we are making a difference. We are literally changing history. We are literally reaching out to those who have felt overlooked we're reaching out to them and saying, here's your chance, here's your opportunity. And we had to really take a moment to recognize that um, we're making some change here. Yeah, this is how change is made. It's not linear. Yeah. It doesn't just happen. Right, right. So I loved how emotional that day was. Of course, there was a lot of tears from the audience, from the speakers, but it really, it really made it clear that we're doing a good thing. I did love and how many people cried. Yes, it was very, <laughs> very over. I'm like, I have makeup on. I can't do this right yeah. now. Um, but one of one of our um, lender lending partners, who is part of Convergence, made this 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 claim. He said, "You cannot get weary in well doing," mm-hmm. and I felt like that day made it very clear that it's been a long fight. We're literally passing on the baton. We were literally uh, carrying on the baton from the civil civil rights movement from other change agents who have really tried to make this kind of change um, in the homeownership rates for years. We're passing on that baton, but we're also making it clear that we're not tired yet. We're we're just getting there. We're just getting there. So two months in, Mm -hmm. do you have like a a basic update? Yes, so, so far five households have successfully closed on a home as a result of the fund, and they have all been black. So it really has been our targeted demographic, our targeted audience. They've also, um, on average, been 86% AMI, which is considered low to modern income. So it really is the the type of households that this fund was designed for. You know, we kept in mind the fact that insufficient cash um, to close is one of the main barriers for Black and Latinx households when it comes to becoming homeowners. So the fact that We've served five households, it's amazing. That is amazing. It's amazing. Homeport has done an incredible job of spreading the word. I've heard um, Leah Evans on the radio. I've heard her in different uh, settings just talking about the fun. And I'm just so happy to hear more and more people seeing this opportunity to unlock homeownership. She's actually right now on a call with Anna Staver. Oh, With all sides talking about the fun. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Leah. Yeah, you know. She's she's out there. She's trying. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I spoke with Netta, mm-hmm. um, Netta Whitman, our um, director of uh, home advisory services. Yes. And uh, we've had we're currently working with thirteen clients, or mm-hmm. or maybe there's thirteen clients, maybe five of whom have already closed on their home. Yes. Eight maybe that are in the process of doing exactly. so. Exactly. And it looks like we're we're giving about not between nine and fifteen thousand dollars that's my understanding as well yeah um how do you determine how much someone gets so honestly the for the fund itself it's a five to one match to savings so you the applicants have to have something in savings to get up to the full fifteen thousand dollars um we really want to make sure that you know you have some skin in the game but even the the whole point of having savings is to show that you already have built that um habit and that you're invested in this journey. But the good thing is you don't even have to touch your savings to cover some of these closing costs or down payment costs. So um, yeah, that's how you get the the full 15,000 is to have at least 
three thousand dollars in your savings and to show that you're prepared to pay the loan back exactly mm -hmm. exactly so we're starting i know that we started the fund with a million dollars in in the bank with it yes to help. yes has more funding been secured so i can't speak too much about it but there's a, an exciting new program coming to uh to columbus to franklin county in the next couple of months and it really is intended to exponentially increase the reach of the Mont Hill Growing Homeownership Fund and other other programs that are currently in our market. So I would say keep your eyes peeled in <laughs> the newspapers because there's just more funding um, circulating, and especially for the, the type of demographics we're serving, first generation home buyers who really do not have that legacy of homeownership. Um, to like to really you know make a make a significant difference in their their own journeys. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. What kind of funding are, <laughs> or do we need to really make a big difference here in Franklin County? So, it's it's a lot. The thing is, there's a lot of programs already there, and a lot of the the banking partners who invested in the Mont Hill Growing Homeownership Fund also have their own down payment assistance programs. The main thing that was um, that convergence found to be a gap was the flexibility of these funds. So many of them had um, certain restrictions, um, they could not be stacked with other other funds or other programs, or there was a DTI requirement, a debt to income ratio requir requirement, or a credit score requirement. So when we build the Mont Hill Growing Homeownership Fund, we recognize that these restrictions are barriers in the marketplace for black, Latinx, and minority households and they do create some kind of um, discrepancy in the type of people who can close on a home. So with that in mind, when thinking about the type of funding that we still need, we still need that flexible cash flow. Again, the Mod Hill, awesome, but it's up to $15,000. We are very cognizant of the cost of houses out there, and they are still increasing. I think. The last report I heard that the average home sales price in Franklin County is about $354,000. Yeah. <laughs> you can afford that. And $15,000, you know, to put towards your down payment can go a long way, but it depends on the type of neighborhood you want to live in. Right. It depends on the type of home that you want to purchase. So in, in our launch of the Mod Hill Fund, um, last uh, not last month two months ago <laughs> we right. made it very clear this is one step this is one solution but we really want to create a catalyst effect where other people other organizations other funders um just add more money to the to the pots because we can't do this by ourselves makes sense yeah what's that process like to solicit more funding um, well, we, I felt like the, the launch was really our call to action. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then, um, I know the National Fair Housing Alliance has also done a lot of, um, they developed a toolkit and done a lot of webinars on special purpose credit programs, which is what the Growing Home Ownership, Home Ownership Fund is. It is uh, basically operating under the legal exception of the Equal Credit Opportunity Act expanding access to uh, credits for demographics who have historically been um, denied access to credit. Mm -hmm. So this type of information and this type of uh, education is very powerful for a bank or for a philanthropic organization that wants to make a difference and you know expand access to credit to, to demographics that have been historically underserved. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just part of the, the, the strategies to increase more funding, is to make a case for why your community, your neighborhoods, the people that you know you see every day who really want to become homeowners but can't, um, the special purpose credit program is one way to, to create a fund targeted towards those, those populations. Have you gotten more engagement with Bloom? Yes, okay. we definitely have, especially with the, um, we have a home buyer readiness program. We just closed enrollment yesterday, but people who tried to access the fund realized that their credit scores were not in the right place or their debt's not in the right place, and then found out that we have this free program, Home Porter is a part of it, to get their credit score up, to get everything you know off their record. Uh, so we definitely see more people funnel into the program as a result of this program. I think same, yeah. like we had our, our home buyer education classes were packed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Neto was telling me, Neto yeah. was like, which is exciting, like more people are like, okay, what can I do? This is possible. It's a wake up call, yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing too is we've also re received inquiries from 
practitioners who are like, I love what you're doing. This is what I this has been my life's work and I'm glad there's an organization like you that is making this happen. How do I join in? So right. that's been exciting as well to have new partners as a result of the, the launch. Yeah, I'm just yeah. glad it's getting the words getting out and people are listening and yeah. people are interested and hopefully it just bodes well for continued growth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now I, I have to ask, have you had any backlash from people who are in their feelings? <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't say backlash. You know something that um, Carly Booth, my executive director, and I talked about. If we aren't, you know, ruffling a few feathers, are we really doing good work? <laughs> right. So there have been a few ruffled feathers, I will say. I think it's people who may not have a full understanding of, again, the legal exception that we're operating under. You know, this is not just us providing preferential treatment, it's us recognizing the data, the gaps that exist in homeownership, and using the law to, um, to provide access to credit, like I said, to, to communities that have been historically, again, the history is there, that have been historically underserved. Yeah, to address a disparity. Exactly. Yeah. So I think the more um, SBCPs, the abbreviated version, the more SBCPs that are out there, the more conversations we're having about the history of restrictive covenant, racially restrictive covenants, redlining, blockbusting, the more education that people have at their disposal to understand that what we're doing is not discriminatory. In fact, it is to repair and rectify discrimination. And there are programs out there who that are open to all. That part. <laughs> this is, again, adding, being focused, and the type of people we're serving is in no way taking away from the programs that are serving more people that have, um, yeah, that have more, I guess, more open demographic requirements. But the case still remains. The black white homeownership gap is 32%. The Latinx and white homeownership gap is 27%. And this is not us creating numbers, the data, the sense uh, from you know the U.S. Census Bureau, it speaks for itself. So how can we create targeted solutions instead of assuming that the, the gap will just close on its own? Right. And that's what we did. And numbers like that aren't reflective of some individual choice or failing. Right. Um, it's indicative of a, a wider sweeping problem. S systemic problem, yes, exactly. 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 Well, I'm glad that it hasn't been too much of a backlash. It hasn't. Again, if there hasn't backlash, I feel like maybe you home court <laughs> <laughs> has received the majority of it, but then you all have the gumption and the, the data and the, the experience in this industry to, to combat it. So we are we were very confident in our selection of who would be the administrator and you have proven us right every step of the way. Yeah, because when people say, where is this for me? We can point them. Exactly, that part. <laughs> yeah. this, you, this is for you. Yeah, here's this for you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and those who are like, those who are black, Latinx and, and minority who say, what is out there for me? Mm -hmm. This is an option. Mm -hmm. And that's where we see, you know, the greatest impact, the greatest change is in the eyes of the households who did not think homeownership was possible for them and now are able to actually tap into those resources. You're just one step close to getting your home but need that extra funding. Tap into this resource. Tap into the Growing Homeownership Fund. Reach out to your lender. Um, they have to apply on your behalf. Reach out to Homeport if you have any questions. But, yeah, just... Get in when you, where you can. It's there. Yeah. If you're listening to this and wondering, how do I get in? Or you have someone in your life who you think could benefit from this fund, you can visit homeportlearning.org for more information on how to get started. Interested in learning more about the work Homeport is doing? Sign up for a Strengthening Communities bus tour. The tour will take you through Homeport neighborhoods and homes to see what affordable housing really looks like, where it is in your communities, and the tangible impact of revitalization efforts. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions and learn more ways to get involved in your community. Go to homeportohio.org slash action slash tours to register. Level With Us is brought to you by Homeport and is recorded, mixed, and edited by Lauren Sega. All sources are in the show notes. Homeport creates strong communities by developing quality, affordable homes on a cornerstone of dignity, security, and opportunity. To learn more, or if you'd like to support our mission, visit us at homeportohio.org.